Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about hacking this Intel Nook to give it uh, 10 gigabit Ethernet capability. You can see I have a fiber cable going into the side of it up here. Um, this is into a SFP Plus, into a Mellanox Connect X3 card. The Nook, the Intel computer, is this silver part. Uh, this black part is a 3D printed case that I made. Uh, this is actually running live right now. It's running VMware ESX. And it's capable with uh, a parallel iPerf from my Windows box into a VM on this to get uh, better than 9 gigabits, almost 10 gigabits per second throughput to this little nook. This is a fifth generation nook. I've actually had it for several years. I've just recently decided to make my um, home office, uh, home lab more power efficient, getting rid of uh, power hungry servers going to these nooks. They're uh, very economical to run. So the idea for this came from a Reddit user, Jack Harvest. He had posted where he had done this with a 6th generation Skull Canyon um, Intel Nook. Um, I'll put a link to that here. And then uh, I tried his technique on a 5th generation. And he tried it as well. We couldn't get it to work initially. Uh, but I came up with a very simple um, and somewhat surprising fix to get it working. Um, anyway, let's talk about what you actually need to do. Let me pocket the uh, cover open on this. Um, this is just sort of my trial case here. Um, I'm going to actually be printing this case up in a uh, little bit nicer and use some thread certs and stuff to hold it all together. So just going through the parts, let me pull this out of the way for a second. We've got the Mellanox Connect X3 um, 10 gigabit card. You can find these uh, cheap on eBay. You can get them for about 30 bucks. Um, here's one right here. Usually comes with a shorty bracket on him. Um, like I say, 30 bucks on eBay. Um, then you'll need to plug an SFP, one of those guys into it. Um, and then you can plug your fiber in. Um, now, of course, this is a PCI Express connector, and Nook doesn't have a PCI Express connector. Uh, so what are we going to do about that? Well, you can find on eBay this little guy. And what this does, this will plug into an M2 with an M key. Uh, the key is important. Different M2 slots have different capabilities. You need an M key, um, and it will give you the PCI Express. Like so. Plug it in. Um, now, a PCI Express card typically uses 12 volt. Um, the M2 slot does not provide 12 volts, so these people have put a header on this adapter. And they have given you a little pigtail to plug it into a standard uh, PC drive connector. Unfortunately, the Nook doesn't have any PC drive connectors either. Um, so you'll have to get 12 volts someplace else. Uh, you can easily use an external wall wart, or you could use a um, 19 volt to 12 volt converter and run it off the Nook's power supply. The Nook itself is running off 19 volts. Um, so what I did here, that's what this orange box is. There is a um, LM2576 buck converter stuffed inside of this. This is actually way bigger than it needs to be, but uh, it's just the circuit board I had handy to make one of these at the moment. I'm going to miniaturize it um, before I finalize this project. This little 12-volt uh, switching regulator. This is way larger than it needs to be, but I repurposed an existing PC board that I had. So you'll see there's like lots of empty space in here. This is just basically an LM2576-12 12-volt regulator along with its inductor diode and a few capacitors. Also threw in a PTC fuse um, that if something gets shorted out it will trip this fuse and a transient voltage suppression diode. If something goes wrong, if it over voltages or, or something, the diode will suppress that. Just a few protection features. Stuck it in a 3D printed case and I'll stick this in some of the empty space inside the extension I'm making to the Nook case. Over here will be a jack where we will feed it with 19 volts same as the Nook's power supply, and out will come the 12 volt. I don't know if you can see there are two lights down there on the little white uh, board. 
Let me show you up here. It's got two LEDs, one there, one there. Uh, one is for the 3.3 volt power, one is for the 12 volt power. So the 3.3 will be supplied through the connector, the 12 has to go through this pigtail. So that's it for the basic approach. Now the first time I tried this, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't detect the card at all. I thought my card was dead, so I'd actually taken a card and I'd modified it uh, to fit in my case situation. I cut off this little tang. You can see I've cut off a chunk of card there. So I figured, well, gee, I must have ruined that card by doing that. There's some internal power planes. Maybe I shorted them. Maybe I wrecked the card. I really thought I'd ruin this. I ordered myself a new one. Came up with a different approach for uh, mounting it so that I didn't have to cut the board. Uh, but then I found out that the uh, replacements, which I actually tested to make sure were good in a desktop PC, they didn't work either. And what it comes down to is looking at this adapter, there's a couple of unpopulated resistor pads in here marked R1 and R2. Uh, I believe those are connected to a pin on the M2 header called CLKREQ hash. Uh, that is a request to turn on the PCI bus clock. Um, you can save power by turning the PCI bus clock off. So they made it so that uh, cards can turn that um, clock on and off. Um, now what they've done here with this adapter, they left those two pads unpopulated and that wire just goes nowhere that's hooked up over there to the M2. So that doesn't make any sense. They didn't wire it through to the PCI connector. They didn't populate either resistors. One of them's a pull up, one of them's a pull down. So I think what was happening and why this wasn't working for me, it was getting no clock. No clock, the board won't run. That's my theory. So I took and I soldered a resistor onto there and pulled that signal down. And mysteriously, it started working. Here's a close up of the board with the resistor. It's the one marked R1. I soldered a 1K resistor across there. Um, it's a devil to get into that spot with your hot air gun because you've got these plastic connectors surrounding it. Um, but if you are patient enough, you can get in there and do it. Uh, what I used was a 1K0603 resistor. I also tried a 300 ohm 0603 resistor. It's entirely possible, though unverified, that you could just solder the pad across. I really don't know. Um, it's, it's hard to get specs on these buses because you have to uh, be a member of someone who's part of the uh, alliance that came up with the standard um, to really learn a lot about these things. Why they didn't just populate this resistor on the board or give you some instructions or something, I don't know. But anyway, this got it working. Now, a little, a few notes about the case that I came up with. Um, first of all, if you look at Jack Harvest's post on Reddit, he has a uh, much smaller, um, more concise case that um, uses a, a ribbon cable. I kind of didn't want to do the ribbon cable. I wanted to just plug the card in directly. Um, Ribbon cables always worry me that I'm going to have some kind of signal integrity problem. I'm probably just worrying about things that don't matter. Yeah, I didn't like the ribbon cable, so I went with this approach that kind of made it a little bit taller than uh, Jack Harvest case. I think my extension is probably at least double his. Um, um, I did put a spot on the side here for a 40 millimeter fan. And my final approach, I'm probably going to populate that because... Uh, I do worry about the Nook getting hot. You know, we've got another 5 watts power going into this Mellanox card. Uh, the heat sink on this thing does actually get hot. Um, now, unfortunately, the card, can you see it clearly here? This tang on the card where it mounts the, um, where it would have mounted the, uh, the bracket on the back, it protrudes down into the area of the nook case if you're going to plug it in direct like I did. So as I said, my first approach was to cut that tang off. You can kind of see it here. I went in there with a the Dremel. I sliced that off. I really, really, really thought I had killed this card because uh, things weren't working. Turns out I hadn't killed the card, but there are power planes. There are at least... Uh, three layers inside of this board uh, beyond the top and the bottom. I mean, you have to be really, really careful. I ended up putting this board under the microscope uh, to make sure that I hadn't um, shorted or wrecked those power planes or damaged traces or anything in there. 
I kind of, after I did this, I don't like this, don't recommend this. So I went with the approach of just taking a Dremel and cutting a notch out of the Nook case. Now this case is aluminum. You will need a Dremel cutting wheel to do it or something like that. Of course, take all the guts out of the case. Don't try to cut it while you've got the Nook mounted in it. That'd be silly. Um, take all the guts out of it, notch it out. Um, then take your air gun and blow it out real well because you don't want any aluminum dust in there that's gonna get on something. And then you will have a nice deep slot in there where you can plug any old PCI X card you want in uh, directly into the adapter. So that seemed to work out uh, pretty well. Um, you can see I've got it running here. It's actually running ESXi. Okay, let's try a quick uh, performance test up here in this white window is my virtual machine running in VMware ESXi running on the modified Nook with the Mellanox uh, network adapter in it, the 10 gigabit uh, Ethernet going to a brocade uh, 6450 switch, um, which is then connected to another Mellanox card in my Windows PC, which is running down here in this window shell. Uh, so let's load up iPerf up here on the Linux box on the Nook. And then down here on the Windows machine, I'll load up uh, iPerf in client mode. Uh, this first test will be single threaded. So we can see we're getting a little over half capacity. We're getting around five gigabits per second, uh, single threaded. If we go to uh, two threads, I think we'll see an increase. Two threads we look like we're getting around uh, seven eight yeah about 7.61 let's try three threads uh, so three threads we're getting uh, what eight and a half gigabits per second uh, let's try four threads Yeah, I think that's probably going to just about max out our performance. So let's see what the final result is. Yeah, about 8.3. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. It only cost about 40 bucks to convert my uh, 1 gigabit uh, copper nook over to a 10 gigabit fiber nook. Um, it's hooked into the rest of the 10 gigabit infrastructure that I'm working on upgrading in the office. Uh, that project is coming along. I'm kind of documenting it on the website a little bit. Um, but yeah, getting this one component upgraded was important. I don't have to buy a more expensive server. I was able to do it really, really cheaply and preserve the power efficiency that we were getting uh, out of that nook. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.